You are about to listen to a message by Apostle Joseph Minter. Apostle Joseph Minter is the head pastor and leader of Torch World Ministries, an all-encompassing network of ministries. Through his teachings of the Word, healing, deliverance and declarations, the power of God has transformed many lives. Now the Word of God. The power principle of faith. Where today I want to start look at certain principles of power, of power. And faith is one of the major, major things in scripture, which is very loaded and which also generates power or grants access to God and his power. And this, this subject of faith is very important. Yeah, because the Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. So we see that faith is very important and uh, it's it's, it's a non-negotiable virtue. Hallelujah. Even as the word is coming, I want you to commit your life, commit your heart into the hand of God. Commit your heart to God. Even as the word is coming. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Begin to pray in the spirit. Prepare your heart for the word. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you praise. We give you praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you for this opportunity. Even as your word is coming, pray that you help us, Lord. Open the eyes of our understanding. Breathe into us, Lord. Help us to understand your word so that we'll be blessed by your word. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we take our seats? Um, today is 23rd April 2023 and I'm talking about the power principle of faith. The power principle of faith. The power principle of faith. Okay. Um, so we've been, we've been looking at authority, power, you know, um, uh, dominion uh, and the formula for dominion as I as I gave authority power image authority and power and we've touched on authority we've looked at certain principles of authority and uh, <clears throat> where today I want to start look at certain principles of power of power and faith is one of the major major things in scripture which is very loaded and which also generates power or grants access to God and his power. And the, this, this subject of faith is very important. Yeah, because the Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And um, the Bible also says that the just shall live by faith. That is even more serious. The just shall live by faith, which means that without faith, the just shall die. Which that your life, the just, your life as a believer hangs on faith. You shall live by your faith. So you shall also die without faith. I hope you are not scared. But I've done some teachings on faith. This is not the first time I'm preaching on faith. I've taught about the laws of faith in 2016, the law of sight, the law of speech. The law of action, all in 2016. The anatomy of matured faith in 2016. Then building altars of destiny, altars of faith in 2018. Then I've talked about contending for the faith. It was it was a minister's retreat, um, contending for the faith. I did an extensive teaching on faith. So all these teachings are there on faith, but I'm teaching another one today on faith 
So we see that faith is very important and uh, it's, it's, it's a non-negotiable virtue. It's non-negotiable. You, you, you can't bypass faith because without faith, it is even impossible to please God. And you cannot get anything from God without faith. You know, in, in James chapter 1, verse 5, going, he said that um, if anyone, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God. You see, who gives to all, uh, gives to us all things, you know, and then he, he gives lavishly without upbraiding us. Then he said, but let him ask in faith, not doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. Let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. The King James says, let that man suppose that he will receive aught from the Lord. Aught. Aught means this. This. He said, you will not receive anything of the Lord if you, if you don't have faith. So it makes the, the, the subject of faith very important and very crucial for our Christian life. You know, now, so it's good that we have to we understand what is faith. Because without faith, you cannot even be saved. Ephesians 2 8 said, By grace through faith, you are saved. You have been saved by grace through faith. So, faith, without faith, it will, it will not be possible for you to be saved. So um, that should tell you that when you are saved, when you are when, when you have been able to believe the Lord, it means that you are given faith. You are given faith, which was uh, based on grace, to be able to receive the gospel and to receive the seed and to be born again. Okay, so there's no believer who doesn't have faith. Yes, so in the New Testament, we don't talk about no faith. Even, even, even we talk about little faith, but um, no, we don't talk about no faith. There's nobody with no faith. Okay. Now, Bible says Hebrews 11 verse 2, said by faith, the elders obtained a good report. The elders obtained a good report by faith or a good testimony by faith. And so that is the same way we are also going to obtain a good testimony before the Lord. Because we can't do otherwise. The elders, that's how they obtain a good testimony before the Lord. So, let me just take you back and let's look at what faith is. First of all, let me tell you what faith is not. Number one, faith is not believing positively. Faith is not um, positive, being positive. Let me put that way. You can be you can be positive about something, it may not be faith. So you can say, Oh, I really believe this will happen. That is not faith. That's not what faith is. It's not something that you really believe will happen. Not even something you really behave, believe. Okay, so faith also um, is not hoping for the best. When you are hoping for the best, that's not faith. Faith does not say, uh, I, am, I am believing God for. That, that's, that's not faith. That is hope. I'm believing God for this. That's hope. That's not faith. Number three, faith does not create anything in the spirit world. The brand of faith teaching that we've been exposed to uh, has been um, telling us that you can create something you want by faith, but it's not true. Faith does not create. Faith doesn't have creative ability. The only thing that can create is the word. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word. The word of God is what he used to create things. Okay? So, there are things that are created or established in the spirit. And, and those are the things that faith will connect to bring down into physical reality. The things already established in the spirit by the word. So therefore, 
you don't have any basis exercising faith for anything that has not already been created by God in the spirit. Anything that has not already been created by God in the spirit. If it doesn't exist in the spirit by God, when you, 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 you are believing for it, it's not an exercise of faith. So therefore, the premise of faith is what God has established, what God has said, what God has done. If it's not about what God has said, what God has established, what God has done, is not faith. So you can get up and take a journey into a far country. We will not call it faith. But Abraham can say, I'm traveling and it is faith. Why? Because God said it. It was God who said, leave your father's house, leave your, mother, your father's house, go to a land that I will show you. So Abraham can travel to a far country. He doesn't know where he's going. And that is faith because it is God who said it. So if God has not said it, you don't have any basis exercising faith for. But faith does not create anything. It's a new age teaching that has crept into the church. That tells us that whatever you want, just be declaring it, declaring it, and then you will receive it. As if your faith can create. But your faith only gives structure to things that have been created in the spirit. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. And the evidence, the evidence of things not not, 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 not seen. Okay? Substance of things hoped for. Substance. It gives structure to the things that are in the spirit realm. That's faith. Faith gives structure to them. The things are already there. But the conduit that they will be transferred through, the, through it, they will be transferred into the seen realm. That conduit is what we call faith. So now, I've, I've just maybe messed up some, some, somebody's theology. So let me, let, me, let me repair, let me give you what faith is. <laughs> and remember, I've taught many teachings on faith. I've, I've listed them for you. What I'm going to say does not contradict what I've been saying. I've been saying this since 2016. Maybe you have not taken note of it. So yeah, you can go back on all the messages. You'll find out that I'm saying the same thing. Now, faith is a bridge between two realms. The eternal realm and the time realm. There are two realms of existence. The eternal realm and the time realm. God lives in eternity. Eternity doesn't have a beginning or an end. So eternity is like a circle. If you look at a circle, you cannot really tell where the circle starts and where it ends. Now, God created time or this earth realm in time. So, so we live in time. Time is uh, measurable. Time is... Um, uh, uh, it, can, it can be... Me measured, quantified from the womb to the tomb is time from the womb to the tomb that is your time and, and time can be, can be divided into or graduated into uh, days, weeks, months in fact seconds, minutes hours, days, weeks, months uh, years, decades centuries that's all under time so time has a definite beginning and an end. So time is like a straight line. But eternity is like a circle. And so how can we relate with a God who doesn't live in time? To the extent that even when, when, when we convert, when we try to do the conversion, yeah, you, you will notice that on earth here, one is thousand years. It's just like one day before God. When his, his, his word has not yet come to pass, thousand years is like one day. When his word comes to pass, one day is like thousand years. Though so the currency, you see the conversion. 
eternity and time. Now, eternity has no past, no present, no future. There's simply now. Eternity is now. Eternity doesn't have any past. So God is the great I am all the time. Not that you were not the great I will be or the great I was. The great I am all the time. He said, whoever, believe, whoever comes to God must believe that he is. Not he was. He is. So eternity is, is now. It is not yet, it's not past, present, or future. It's now. Now, so the gift of grace which God gave to man for man to be able to connect to the eternal realm, that gift is called faith. And faith is a gift of grace. According to Romans 4.16, anything that is of faith is of grace. So Romans 4.16, it says, Therefore it is of faith that it might be according to grace. See, it is of faith that it might be according to grace. Because that gift that you need to connect to, the, to God's realm, you could never have manufactured it. There was no way you could have had that gift. That's why I say you have been saved by grace through faith. Grace is a heaven-based reality. God has a throne of grace. But faith is an earth-based reality. It's a time-based reality. And so by, by, you have been saved by grace through faith. And that is the gift of He said, and not of yourself. It is the gift of God. That faith was the gift of God to you. The reason why you could believe in the gospel and respond and accept the gospel was that God gave you a gift called faith. That's the faith that got you born again. So, faith connects to the eternal spiritual realm and then faith also configures our spiritual faculties and it empowers our the functioning of our spiritual faculties this gift of faith so when you receive the gift of faith it awakens your spiritual faculties that's why your your heart was open to receive the gospel the gospel was communicated to you and immediately your heart was opened and you said, Lord Jesus, I accept you. That was a gift. That gift of faith is what opened your spiritual faculty to understand the gospel or to accept the gospel. That's the same gift that opened you, connected you to the spirit realm. You know, because when you become born again, it says you, you, you can see the kingdom. John 3, John 3, 3. He said, except one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom. He cannot, no, no, John 3, 3. He cannot see the kingdom. You see, he said, except one is born again, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom. So when you're born again, you can see the kingdom. What it means is that, when you are born again, because faith is given to you as a gift, it empowers your spiritual faculties and you can connect to the kingdom. That is where you can begin to understand spiritual things. The natural man, the one who is not born again, cannot receive spiritual things, the things of God. For he is carnal, for they are, for they are spiritually designed. Therefore, it is foolishness to him. And he cannot perceive it because they are spiritually deserved. So when you are born again, what God, what God does is that he gives you the he gave you that gift of grace called faith that enabled you to connect to the eternal realm. You will need this, you will need this gift that he has given you throughout your Christian life. Faith then becomes a currency in the realm of the spirit. It, it becomes a currency. The realm of the spirit. The seeing the kingdom is connected, is connected to the eternal realm. Therefore, to walk by faith is to walk by your spiritual faculties rather than your natural faculties. That's faith. 
the ocean of faith is sight. Are you following? Or are you following? Or you need to go and listen to all the message before before you can get this one. No, you, you can get it. So that's why I've taken my time. What I'm saying is that that gift of grace that was given to you when you're born again, that connected you to the spirit realm, that empowered you, enabled you to understand spirit and, and receive spiritual things. It is that same gift of grace called faith that you will need throughout your Christian life. You will need that throughout your Christian life. Just that it can grow and it must grow. It's a currency in the spirit, but what it can procure depends on its size, how it has grown. What you can buy, use the thousands of things to buy, you cannot use five, 500 things to buy. If you have 100,000, it means you can buy more things than the one who has 10,000. In the same way, with that same seed of faith that is given to every believer, some can grow their seed so that they can use that currency to buy spiritual realities, bring them down into physical, the physical life. And when I say buy, I'm not talking about material things. <laughs> uh, it has a connection to it, but it's not material things. The spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus that have been reserved for us but they are, they are to be brought down here, you know, uh, for it to reflect in our lives, to manifest in dominion. But how to bring them, that is the currency, it's faith that you will need to bring them from that realm into this realm. So the thing Jesus Christ procured for us, the seven things we talk about that he procured, they are all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, according to Ephesians 1.4. They are all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. But you don't, you don't need to wait to go to heaven to spend them. The currency, they are in the spirit. The currency that you can use to bring them into your life for them to manifest a dominion, that currency is faith. So what are the spiritual blessings in the heavenly places? I've taken time to explain, to teach on all these things. Uh, the Lamb of God was slain to receive power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing. These seven things are the things that Jesus purchased for us. But they are reserved in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. But you need to bring them down here. And the exchange rate, the currency that you need to bring them down here, that currency is faith. But that faith was given to you when you were born again to connect you to that realm. But if it, it has to grow for you, for that, that's the growth of it will determine what you can bring down. So the same seed of faith, different manifestations, different levels of manifestations among believers. Okay. So, Bible says we must walk by faith and not by sight. You know what that means? That means that when you are walking according to your natural faculties as a believer, you are at a disadvantage. Because the realm you should be walking from is the realm of faith. The realm of your spiritual faculties. So we don't take decisions based on what we see with our physical eyes or what we reason with our mind. We take it from what we have seen with our spiritual eyes, what we reason with our spiritual mind. And it's practical. Every part of your life. When, if you decide to live by sight, as a believer, you are going to be defeated. If, uh, if you just walk by, walk by sight, you take your, you, your, you live your life based on the things you are seeing. So, you can be seeing something negative physically. You see, the interpretation you give to it depends on how your spiritual faculties have been enhanced. So in the natural, it can be a dead end. It can be a, a place of no solution, the natural. So as a believer, 
Are you going to live your life based on what is the natural? What is your reality? Is your reality the natural or the spiritual? That is the whole question of faith. What is your reality? So when they tell you this, what is wrong with you? That is what is happening in the natural. Do you have inside information in the spiritual to counter the natural? Are you getting it? So the Bible says, whose report will you believe? Are you going to believe what you are seeing with your eyes? Or you rather believe what you are seeing with your spiritual faculties? You go, your spirit man also has a mind. That is the mind of the spirit. Also has eyes. Your, 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 you have spiritual eyes. You have spiritual mind. So the essence of being born again is to connect you to that realm. And that realm is more powerful than this physical realm. In fact, that realm is more real than this realm. So therefore, Bible says, we look not at things which are seen. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18. We do not look at things which are seen. But we look, no, 418, but we look at things which are not seen. While we do not look at things which are seen, but the things which are unseen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So that you can you can look at what is seen and define your reality by what you see. But you can also look at what is not seen. The fact that it's not seen doesn't mean it's not real. We have unseen realities. They are so real, but they are unseen to the physical eyes. When we say Jesus Christ died for us and he paid the price for our healing, you can't see with your physical eyes that it exists. It's so, it's so real in the spirit. It's a fact. Everybody in the spirit knows that he took away our sickness. He took away our sickness. Everybody in the spirit, the devil, angels, demons, because it happened in the spirit realm. So that is a reality, but it's unseen the natural. So when you look at your body and you look at what is wrong with the body and you define your reality from it, the natural consequence is that you will die. That's why I say they just live by faith. And, but when you look beyond the body and see what Christ did, that he took away your healing, and you begin to reorder your reality to see what took place in the spirit, you will see that the unseen realities will be superimposed on the physical realities. So you will see strength swallowing up death and sickness and decay. Because strength is one of the things that were purchased by Jesus and they are, they are there in the, in the spirit world. That is, that is the simple definition of the faith work. Looking at the unseen things. Someone will say, how can you look at what is not seen? It means it's not a physical look. You say, while well, we look at the unseen thing. So for you to be able to see or look at something that is not seen, it means you are not just looking with these two eyes. Many a time, as believers, we take decisions, we move, we do many things based on these two eyes, based on this mind, you see, based on what we feel, based on what we hear physically, based on what we smell, the five senses. The five senses, you see, the five senses, that is, they are not supposed to direct us. We are not supposed to be directed by the five senses. We are supposed to give interpretation to what we are seeing. The spirit man in us has to interpret what we are seeing from the point of view of spiritual realities. That is why Jesus Christ can look at a dead girl and say, do not be afraid, she is asleep. He was telling the truth, but it didn't make sense because he was speaking from the eternal realm that she's asleep. So, when you look at things with your spiritual faculties, you are walking in faith. And the option of, option of walking in faith is walking by sight. Walking by sight. 
Do you know that walking by sight can, can give you a disease? Can give you depression? Do you know that? Because there are not many pleasant things to look in this world. You look at your exam re report and you see your body will start reacting. Look at the lab results and your body will start shaking. Sometimes the sickness is, is, is made worse by what you interpret, what, how you look at the thing and the thing is speaking to you. When you sit before the doctor and he starts shaking his head and he says, I'm sorry. Look, look at how you can be depressed. That same word, I'm sorry, that they say is a, is, a, is a magic word that can repair relationships. I'm sorry. When you hear from a doctor, it's not a magic word. It's not a pleasant thing. It means what follows is, is a, an unpleasant reality. It can kill you even before the sickness kills you. I've discovered something. The phrase or the scripture, they just are lived by faith. It is literal. It is literal. Our only way of escape from, from this, re this realm of, of negative realities is faith. They just are lived by faith. Because I've, 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 I've seen instances where faith is what made a difference between life and death. Okay, so I've heard a story where somebody was on the plane and was about to crash. And the person said in the name of Jesus, this plane cannot crash. And the person is still alive. So what about if the person did not exercise that faith? That could have meant the death of the person. So the just shall live by faith. It's true. The just shall dominate by connecting to the eternal realm. If you want to dominate the physical, you must connect to the spiritual. It is the spiritual that dominates the physical, not the other way around. So you can be you can be in competition with somebody. The unbelievers are even wiser when it comes to these things. Because he knows he knows that he cannot just be selling things, you know, and just using physical. You know, no, so he will go for something supernatural. That you are a believer. You already you have been born into the supernatural. You have been born into the spirit realm. Your spirit man is connected to the supernatural. And this faith has been given to you. But the believer will just take it casually and begin to do things from his mind, intellect, his calculations. Do you know, anytime God gives you an instruction, God is helping you to escape this time realm and to connect to his eternal realm. When Jesus Christ told Peter, Come, said, Sir, Master, if it is you, tell me to come. He said, Come. Meanwhile, the come meant that he had to leave the boat and start walking on the water. But it was an invitation to take Peter from the, the time realm into the, 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 the eternal realm. Because according to time realm, where you can't walk on water, it will, it will drown. But there was something that was sustaining Peter that was helping you to walk on water. That is the word. Come. That's why I say that you can't talk about faith if God has not spoken. So faith is only about what God has said, what God has done, what the word has established. That's faith. You don't have any business believing for anything that God has not said. You will waste your time. That is new age teaching. If, you, if God has not said it, you can't believe for it. So, what, what you want to see in, in the physical, your duty is to find out if God has said it. If God has said it, and God can say it to you personally, and that becomes the word that you stand on to believe something. So, faith is not in a vacuum. Because everybody can exercise faith belief. The Greek word is pistis. So the arm robber believes is hoping that he will not be caught. The pen robber is also hoping that he will not be caught. You know pen robbers? 
We have armed robbers and then pen robbers. The pen robbers, sometimes they are in suit. They are, they are, they are dressed nicely. <laughs> but they can rob with a pen. They are, they are both praying that and hoping that hoping that they are not caught. The one who is going out to, to have fun and to do many, many bad things, they are organizing uh, a party and all that. They are also praying that it doesn't rain. Believing that it doesn't rain. And we too have a crusade. We also pray that it doesn't rain. So the difference is what God has said. When you get a revelation of the eternal realities and decide to bring them into the earth realm, that is where the problem is. You see, that's why our faith needs to grow. And that's why God allows our faith to go through process. Because from the eternal realm to the time realm, you see, one thing about the time realm is that the time realm is subject to processes, procedures, cycles, patterns, the time realm. From the invisible eternal realm to the visible natural time realm, it takes faith. And the reason why the faith takes time to grow is because in the time realm, things have to go through processes, procedures, cycles, patterns. So therefore, God can give a word and God can say, it is done. It is done doesn't mean that when it enters time, when it enters time, it goes through process. When Mary said, behold, I'm the Lord's handmaiden. Let it be according to your word. She, she took seed. It does not mean she gave birth one month time. Because when you hit time realm, that's when you, you, start, going, you start going through process. So Mary will take seed. The word will come from the spirit realm. She will receive the word. And yet, she will go through nine months. Of pregnancy because she gave birth to a baby not 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 a lizard a human being and a human being the period for the gestation period is nine months that's an example of how things are born from it from spiritual to physical oh let me give you another example maybe this one you you think oh after Mary everything was supernatural even the way she got pregnant was supernatural. So that the, the way she gave birth to was supernatural. No. Count you what first Kings 18, 41 to 45. Look at how things move from the time realm, from the eternal realm, to the time realm. Then Elijah said to Ahab, Go up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. There's what? The sound. Now that sound was a spiritual sound, not a physical sound. Ahab did not hear the sound. It was Elijah that heard the sound. So he heard what had taken place in the spiritual. Abundance of rain. I hear the sound. But what did he tell Ahab? Go up and eat. Oh, it is done. He was speaking like God. But look at how it came to pass. When you continue, he said, then Ahab went out to eat and drink. Because Ahab he was using his physical eyes. Prophet said I should drink. He didn't know the transactions that were going on behind the scenes. Then Elijah went up to the top of, the, uh, top of camel. Then he bowed down on the ground and put his face between his knees. The posture of intercession. Posture of giving birth to what is in the spirit realm. And said to his servant, go up now to where the sea. So he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. Seven times he said, go again. Seven times can be seven days. It can be seven minutes, seven hours. Seven times. So he will go. Say, no sign. But I thought you said you heard the abundance of rain. That was in the spirit. What he was doing, putting himself between his knees, was a post of intercession. He was, he was giving birth to what are taking place in the spirit already. So seven times. The, after the seven time, what did he say? It came to pass the seventh time that he said, there's a cloud as small as a man's hand. As small as a man's hand. 
not as big, as small, rising out of the sea. So he said, go up, say to Ahab, prepare your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. Now, this one, first one, he said, go up and eat. But I've heard the sound. It's a sound, but I, I know what I've heard. But there's work to do. Went and put his face, head between his knees and started praying. When he saw the physical manifestation, the little sign, that was the physical manifestation, he said, it's, it's done. It's done. Now, the thing has arrived. From the eternal realm, it has arrived. You see, sometimes you will see the physical, anytime you are bringing something from that realm to this realm, now, it can take some time, but when you start seeing a little manifestation physically, it means that the whole thing has arrived. It has arrived, but in earth, it has to go through process, procedure, cycles, patterns on earth. Do you know when Jacob was convinced that Joseph is indeed alive? When he saw the, uh, the camels that Joseph sent to come and pick him. When they told him, your son Joseph is alive, he was happy, but he didn't believe when he saw the camels and he saw the, the wagon and all that, he said, it's enough. My son Joseph is alive. So when Elijah, Elijah saw the size, the little fist, he said, it has, it has started. It took faith. That's why it's not only faith that can give you what God has said. There are two, there are two, there are two uh, ingredients, faith and patience. Hebrews 6, 12. He said we should not be sluggish. But we should imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Through faith and patience. You can never procure anything by just faith alone. Because you see, for faith to get to patience, there's some work that must be done. God, that faith is a seed. That seed, you can't use it for... The only thing that seed was able to help you to do was to believe the gospel. But to bring down all the other realities, that seed must grow. And one of the, one of the, one of the byproducts of the faith process is called patience. I'll, 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 I'll get to that, that place. Okay, so now, let me, let me also explain something to you. Um, when you go through the Bible, the New Testament, you will see the faith and faith, the two are not the same. The faith and faith. So, um, when we talk about the faith, we are talking about what, what I call the objective faith. I've been, I've been teaching on that, you know. Objective faith, the faith. Now, the faith is the set of beliefs and principles that governs our work and function in this earth realm, the faith, the Christian faith. So when you say content for the faith, that's not your personal faith. That is a corporate faith. You say the faith that was one delivered to the saints, content for the faith. That means ensure that the gospel is not adulterated, ensure that the principles, the landmarks are not removed, content for the faith. So the faith is talking about the things that we have that been given to us to believe and for them to um, define our work, our work in, in this realm, the faith. So uh, scriptures, when you look at scriptures like Colossians 1.23, there, there are many scriptures, I'm just giving you two. But when you look, when you take a concordance, you will see, if indeed you continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast, in the faith, and I know no more moved away from the hope of the gospel, which you had. The faith means that if you continue in the Christian faith, if you continue believing the things that we believe and living by the principles that have been set out in scripture, see, that is the faith. The faith is the things we believe. Your belief system, your value system, and your worldview, they make up the Christian faith. You can talk about the Muslim faith. Is that also? Yeah, now also they have their value system, their beliefs, and their worldview. So the faith, the Christian faith, 
our value system, our belief system, our value system, and our worldview. These are the three things that make up the faith, the Christian faith. Colossians uh, 2 7, the same thing. Being rooted and built up and established in the faith. This one is not in your faith, not personal faith. The faith, the objective faith. They will have the subjective faith, which is your faith. That is how much that seed that you were given at the new birth, how much it has grown and what it can procure, what it can download from the spirit realm, eternal realm to the time realm. That is your faith. And that one can, can grow. 1 Thessalonians 1 3, he said they were growing in faith. Remembering without ceasing. Remembering without, no, um, wait. 2 Thessalonians 1 3. Sorry. It says, We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitting, because your faith grows exceedingly. This one is your faith. This one is your faith. That gift that was given to you that enabled you to, be, to become born again as a seed. How much has that gift grown to be able to bring down, download the spiritual realities, eternal realities from eternity to time? That is your faith. That one too can grow. But when you, when you check the Bible, you see more of the faith than your faith. I don't know why, but you see more of the faith than your faith. Our emphasis more is on our faith than the faith. So this one is a subjective faith. Subjective faith. So we grow in this kind of faith. Your faith. The just shall live by his faith. Your faith. We grow by our conscious engagement of the word and spirit in the secret place and by our personal work with the Lord. The experiences he takes us through. Yes. So therefore, a person can grow in the faith and not grow in faith. It shouldn't be like that, but it can happen. You can grow in the knowledge of the things that make up our Christian faith and be weak in your personal faith as in how you can personally download things from the spirit realm to this time realm. You can work in that. So this faith is a seed and can grow. We've seen that. Okay. That's why there are different levels of growth when it comes to faith. Uh, you can find various adjectives that are used for faith in the Bible to indicate growth. In the New Testament especially, you can see little faith. Matthew 6.30, Matthew 8.26. You can write them down. Matthew 6.30, Matthew 8.26. Little faith. Little faith is faith that only thinks about survival. It cannot see beyond survival. So anytime Jesus Christ told them, oh, you have little faith, he was talking about survival, these earthly things that you, you, you think uh, you can't make it without them. Three Fs, food, um, um, fashion, future. These three Fs, he talked about them in Matthew 6. And he said, these three things, if you are afraid and they take away your peace, and they take away your joy, you are, you are, you are, your faith is little. You see, it means that the same, that faith that was given to you when you're born again, you have not grown it. So now it's just hovering over the, the earth surface. You, you, it, can, it, can be, it can download greater things. You say, now if God so close the gas of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will you not much more clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? You say, why do you why are you anxious about tomorrow, future? So this said it was three Fs, food, fashion, future. He said, don't, don't say, what shall we eat tomorrow? Or where shall we be clothed? For he said that tomorrow will think of itself. He said, therefore, do not worry. No, no, no. You're, okay. Do not worry and say, what shall we eat 
Or what shall we wear? See, they say, so when you are when you are caught worrying about survival, you are you are, you, are, you have not grown in faith. You are you have no you are you actually little faith. Then we have weak faith. Romans 4 19. He said, Abraham was not weak in faith. He was not weak in faith. So you can be weak in faith. Then we have growing faith. 2 Thessalonians 1 3. Say your faith grows exceedingly. So growing faith. Your faith can be growing. Then we have strong faith. Romans 4 20. Abraham was made strong. He was strengthened in faith. So, so you can be strengthened in faith. Then we have great faith. Jesus Christ said, Oh woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you according to your faith. The woman didn't have any, any basis to request for a miracle because she was not part of the commonwealth of Israel. And Jesus Christ came to, to the lost sheep of Israel, not to the Gentiles. And this woman was a Gentile, you know, and her daughter was, was, was being thrown by a demon. And the daughter was not there, but she was able to believe that Jesus, when he speaks, it can cross boundaries. It can cross boundaries to effect a healing. So he said, ah, woman, great is your faith. Do you know why he said great your faith? You see, some people in this time said, if only I would touch his garment, I will be made whole. They touched and they were made whole. Some said, if only he touches me. So he touched people and healed them. Some also said, Lord, let us touch the, your garment. He went to a certain place. They said, let's touch your garment. Then he allowed them to touch their, uh, his garment. And all of them were, were healed. But some also said, Lord, don't, you, don't, you don't have to come to my house. Speak the word. And my servant will be healed. And he said, assuredly, I have not found such a great faith in Israel. He used this phrase, great faith, twice. One was for the centurion. One was for the woman who was a Gentile. Who was going to be living for her daughter who was far away. But he was, he was able to believe that if you speak a word, if you speak a word, there are people that have prayed for on the phone and they have gotten miracles, healings. Yes, on the phone. <laughs> and there are people that have laid hands on and nothing has happened. I've prayed for people on the phone and they have given testimonies testimonies like the one you, you asked me to pray for the, the, the child could not break food uh, bring spoon to his mouth and she's outside Ghana and I prayed on the phone and she sent me a testimony for the first time the child was able to bring a spoon to his, to his mouth it was a miracle by happening on the phone what I mean is this. Actually, there's no distance in the spirit. The barrier is in your mind. So if you think that unless he lays, he, he lays hand on me, I will not be healed. This two people said, no, just speak the word. Real faith. See, he said, I've not seen such great faith in Israel. Real faith is when you are able to believe the word. That he said it and I believe it. Just last week, I prayed for somebody who was deaf in one ear on the phone, my daughter's uh, classmate. On the phone, the ear opened. You see, but I can, but I can lay hands on somebody, it will not happen. Somebody who is far, you see, so that is faith. There's no distance to spirit. Okay, steadfast faith, Colossians 2 4 to 5. Steadfast faith. Steadfast faith. Colossians 2 45. Now, this I say, lest anyone should 
deceive you with persuasive words. Verse 5. For though I am absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in the spirit, rejoicing to see your good order and the steadfastness of your faith. You can be steadfast in faith. Then the last one, perfect faith. You can write that one down. James 2 verse 22. Say so that you be made, faith was made perfect. But let me um, take you through how your faith will grow. How your, when you listen to the message I preach on, the anatomy of mature faith, that whole message was on 2 Peter 1 5 to 7. And I preached it on 2016, in 2016. The anatomy of mature faith. What is mature faith? You will see these things in every faith that is mature. No, Second Peter, Second Peter 1, 5 to 7. That's, that's but also for this very reason, giving all diligence out to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance or patience, to perseverance godliness or godlikeness, to godliness brotherly kindness, to brotherly kindness agape or love or charity. Now, when you hear this scripture, the first impression will be it says add to your faith. So the faith is there. Then you have to add. That, that's not what, what, it, what it means. That, that's, that's what this, if you see your thing that was it, it says add. But if you listen to the message I preached in 2016, I, I said that it's not adding. It's rather the faith producing. You see, it's like this. Faith is going through a process and there are byproducts. Do you know when they are looking for oil, if it is oil they are looking for, by the time they get the oil, they would have gotten certain byproducts. Like what? Kerosene. Like bitumen. These are byproducts. And so as faith is going through the crucible, going through the process, these byproducts of faith they come. But the end of the journey is love. And that love is oneness with God. So the end of your faith journey is to come to a point where you are one with him. So, there are three levels, or let me say three instruments at work in the faith journey. They are the word of God, that is light. Then you can have prayer. Prayer can be rain and experience heat. These three things, these are the three instruments. You see, so you are going through a crucible or let's say a machinery. And these three instruments, they are the ones that are the levers. They are the instruments that they are shifting the gears, you know, they are. Uh, pushing the raw, raw material. Your, so your faith is the raw material. So, when you start the faith journey, in other words, when we become born again, faith is given to you as a gift. It's a seed. I've thought about the seed of faith, the gift. That got you born again. And I said, that is spiritual currency. But it needs to grow for it to be able to download spiritual realities. Now, the faith as a seed, the very first byproduct of faith is called virtue. And the Greek word for virtue here is aritia, it means energy or power. Now, so. What produces this byproduct is the effect of the Holy Spirit baptism on the seed that you have received called faith. That is why when you receive the Holy Spirit baptism, the byproduct of the faith you have been given is power. You, you, you receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. The faith is a seed in you that got you born again. The living word incorruptible word. But then, the Holy Spirit comes upon you 
to work on the faith. And the first byproduct is power. Power. At this stage, a certain kind of fire and zeal is produced. And God has a reason why the first byproduct is fire and zeal. Because that also ignites the first love. Many believers accomplish more for God during the first two years of their life than all their lives put together. The first few years of their Christian journey, some, many believers accomplish more for God. Why? Because virtue was released. First love was working. And first love, they produce first works in Revelation. Look at the life of Stephen. In Acts chapter 6, verse 5, and then verse 8, you will see that Stephen, when Stephen uh, received this empowerment, they couldn't stop him. And the same pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit. That was the first level, faith and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit working on his faith to produce virtue. Go to verse 8. Look at what Stephen was doing. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. He was so vibrant because of the virtue that was released by faith being worked on by the Holy Spirit. That's the first, that's the first stage. And I'm saying that that thing, that state produces more in many people's lives. More. Because the zeal, the zeal can accomplish great things. Usually, when the zeal is released and we experience great power, usually, we think we have arrived. You see, that's why Stephen was killed. Stephen was killed. Because even when he went to stand before the, the elders, the way he was talking was not easy. Even though he, he I, I, I know he was a martyr. Okay, that's why maybe he was speaking like that. If you were a martyr, you, you, you will go to Saudi Arabia and get mount a, a platform and say, Jesus is the only way. If you were a martyr, meanwhile, maybe God has not even sent you there. But the zeal will take you there and you'll be killed for your faith. Which is good. But it means you will miss all the things, other things that you must get in the process. For, for God to be able to use you for a long time. So if somebody becomes born again, the Holy Spirit comes, the person who receives power, he says, I want to walk on water. By faith. You know, somebody jumped into a lion's cage. Yes. He said, if Daniel was not harmed, why can't I jump into the cage? Oh, you didn't, you didn't see it on social media. He jumped into the cage. And the lion didn't spare him. <laughs> and people will say, well, why didn't God protect him? It wasn't God who sent him there. It's not faith. If God didn't tell you to go and stand there for him to prove that he's God. It was just zeal. The zeal, and that zeal, sometimes, if it's not controlled, that's what it can bring. It can accomplish great things. It can also do a lot of damage to you if you don't take care. If you take care, you can die before your time and think you die to please God. Hmm. One man of God went to, he said something against the Muslims and he went to beg them. Another man of God started criticizing him and saying, you are a disgrace to Christianity. <laughs> Why should you go and apologize to the Muslims? But what he said against them, was it God who told him to say it? That's the question. If it was God who told him to say it, then no need to apologize. But this was his own human flesh saying it. So if you don't go and apologize and they kill you, they will kill you. And, and you will say that you died for your faith. You know, it, was, it was the zeal the second byproduct of the faith process is called knowledge. It's called knowledge. As you grow in faith, 
you, you see, knowledge will release. And this knowledge is not mental knowledge. This knowledge is revelation knowledge. It comes by spiritual understanding. Do you know, for instance, that you can have a dream, a vision, an encounter that can strengthen your faith, that can boost your confidence in God, that can build you up what is about to happen. That is the realm of knowledge. The process where, where you get to where God begins to give you light, understanding, that will increase It will increase your, your, your strength in faith. So, meditation, that, that brings understanding, encounters, dreams, visions. When the believer gets to this realm of knowledge, with these encounters, this understanding, this, for instance, do you know Many years ago, anytime I would travel, I would have a sense that the devil is coming after my family. So sometimes when I'm traveling, I, would, I had three shirts, my children, I had three shirts. And I, 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 I named them after my children. I prayed over them. So when I travel, they sleep with, the, with those shirts. So they, when they sleep, they were young. When they sleep, they would cover themselves with a the shirt. So one day, I came back from I think it was a crusade. Then my wife told me a dream she had. That in the dream, some wicked people had come to stand behind our window and they were trying to locate them. And one of them was saying, shoot, shoot. Another person was saying, I can't see them. I can't. He said, oh, shoot them. He said, oh, I can't see them. Now that, that dream settled me. It settled me. So I stopped giving my shirt to them when I travel. I say, you are covered. You are, uh, that, that's the place where faith can be strengthened by dreams and, and visions. Imagine you are afraid of some something, maybe a spiritual something. Then you have a dream and you have conquered them. Gosh. When I had a dream, I was in a town. And as I was coming, the whole town was chasing me. They were chasing me with cutlass, with sticks, the whole town. So as I went to get to my car, I wanted to escape into the car. I turned and I saw rain, fire raining on them. So I woke up, I had to make a journey. And I was feeling one kind. <laughs> so I woke up with confidence. That is one of some of the ways that faith, the, gen, the journey of faith will produce knowledge. Now, this knowledge is spiritual knowledge. Nothing can convince you that God is with you. You have not, it's something you have seen the spirit or an understanding. I listened to, I read a book by, I think, I'm sure he said that uh, his, one of his nephews had a mental problem. And he was very wild. They couldn't control him. Then he had also just returned from a retreat. And the whole retreat, he was meditating on John 1 verse 5. And the light shined in the darkness. And the darkness could not comprehend. So he said he got to a point where, you know, the word of God contains wine. You can get to a point of meditation where you'll be drunk. You'll be drunk. It's like you are mad. You are charged. It's like you, you, you feel that you are not in this world. So he was meditating that I am light. No darkness can survive around me. So he said, put him in my car. Let me see the demon that will flow into my car. So they put him in his car. As soon as he got to his car, he slept. He slept. And as he was writing, the guy was in a law school. Yes, he slept. Now, this one was, it, it, it was not anointing. This one was revelation knowledge. Something he found out from scripture that overpowered his senses, made him drunk, charged. 
Yes. That is knowledge. That's knowledge. Right after this place, when God begins to build your faith through these things, you are, you are, you are moving on from the place of faith to the place of trust. Because in the faith journey, there are three stages. Faith, trust, oneness. Okay, so you are moving from the, the realm of faith into the realm of trust. Do you know trust is deeper than faith? Trust. So let's say your child, my child is standing up there and I tell the child, jump, I'll catch you. He has not seen me do something like that before. So he has to, he has to, be, he has to take a risk. The beginning of faith journey is a risk, but it's not always a risk throughout. A time can where you are not taking a risk. You are taking a definite leap. You see what you are landing on. So the first time she will jump, believing that daddy will catch me, it's a risk. Now, if he she jumps and I catch her, the next time I say jump, it's not faith, it's trust. Because she has seen practically what I can do. So she can jump without thinking. So God helps us to move from faith to trust with practical things. Sometimes when God is giving you an instruction to do something, it's like, I don't know whether he will come through for me. I don't know whether this thing will work. I don't know whether I'm not killing myself, whether I'm not taking a stupid decision. When you take it, you are tempted, you take the risk and you will see how God will, will come to you swiftly. The next time he says, do this, you will not think twice. You will not think twice. You will be. That one is trust. And that is from this realm of knowledge, you are going to the realm of trust. The realm of trust. Because this knowledge, is it, for instance, do you know your spiritual senses, what they reveal to you, the target is to strengthen your faith. Let me give you, come to us 27 verse 21. Revelation can increase our belief, our trust, our dependence on God. But after a long abstinence from food, then Paul stood in the midst of the men and said, Men, you should have listened to me and not have sailed from Crete and incurred this disaster and loss. And now I urge you not to, to, I urge you to take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. For there stood by me this night an angel of the God to whom I belong, whom I serve, saying, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must be brought before Caesar, and indeed God has granted you all those who sail with you. Therefore, take heart, men, for I believe God that it will be just as it was told me. So, how, where is that confidence coming from? An angel stood by him that night. But you see, Paul could have gotten that same confidence also from the word. If, let's say, he, he dared to take the word literally. So you, you don't need to see an angel or have a dream before you believe that the word of God is true. But sometimes these, these things, they help us. They help us to bring out the reality of the word, that the word is true. But you don't need an angel or any revelation to accept the word. You can just meditate on the word and come to a point where your spirit man understands that revelation comes that you have protection. You are preserved. That nobody can just kill you. You can come to that point from the word. But God can also um, show you dreams so that you take away your fear. There was a point where I was scared of um, guns, armed robbers and all that. I was thinking about certain things. One day I had a dream. I was in the car and I was on the passenger seat. And Bishop Wade Depot was on the driver's seat. And an armed robber was coming with a gun. When he was heading towards the car in the dream, I went back like this. 
so that maybe the gun. Then the man of God said, Don't do that. They said, I dare you. So he took the, the nose of the gun and broke it. I was afraid. But he said, Don't do that. Then he told the armor, I dare you. You see, that was to help me take away the fear. So that will strengthen my faith. But I don't need to have that dream to believe that God protects me. That's what I'm thinking about. Elisha prayed that God will open his servant's eyes so that he will see chariots of fire. But Elisha himself didn't see the fire out of fire. Yet he said, those who are with us, they are more than those who are, are against us. But the servant couldn't relate. Really oh God, open his eyes. Because your spiritual senses, the highest of them all is knowing. Second highest is sight. Third highest is hearing. Fourth highest is smelling. Fifth highest is tasting. And touch. And the touch is a seed. So you can hear something in the spirit. This scripture, Paul, had, Paul told them that I perceive that we are all going to die. <laughs> so he told them, I perceive there will be loss of lives and of the cargo. But then, when he saw, everything was clearer. Then he saw that, oh, no, uh, lives will not be lost, but the cargo will be lost. So, seeing is a very, very, very great spiritual faculty. We should be concerned it, when we as believers we don't see we don't have dreams, we don't have visions or you don't have people around you who see you should be concerned because sometimes you may not see but somebody can see and sometimes you may not see but you can hear you can sense but these things they help us to live a life of dominion through faith so and you also know that in the spirit realm um, seeing comes after hearing. You can hear. Hearing has a wider coverage, but it's, 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 it's narrow in scope. You know, you can hear, I can hear from my back as I stand here. I can hear from here, from here, from here, and from my back. So it's, a, it's wider in coverage. But seeing is clearer, and seeing is Without, without a doubt. If only Isaac had seen, they couldn't have deceived him. He was hearing, he was smelling, he was feeling, and still they could deceive him. You could even hear the voice of Jacob, and said, "He said, I can hear the voice is of Jacob, but the 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 hand is Esau's hand, and the clothes they are Esau's clothes. I I, I can smell Esau. But if he had." Seen, oh, they, they couldn't have deceived him. And uh, this, are uh, you know, this is so this Jacob. That one is clear. So in Job 42, verse 5, he said, I've heard you with the head of ears, but now my eyes see you. I've heard you, now my eyes see you. In Revelation, Revelation 1, verse 10, he said, I tend to see the voice that I heard, to see the voice. The third byproduct of the faith process is called self-control. So when you receive spiritual knowledge and you keep on receiving spiritual knowledge, you hit a process, you hit a process, a place in the process called self-control. This is where you start the journey into trust. The self-control can be defined as Trusting in the Lord and not trusting in the flesh. The degree to which you trust in the flesh will determine the degree to which your faith is low. Self-control. When you are in the faith work, you get to a place where now what is produced is called confidence. Now that confidence is not confidence in yourself. 
is confidence in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Proverbs 3 verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. So, when we say trust the Lord, it means that you are not trusting the flesh. You are not depending on your intellect for everything. You are trusting in the Lord. When you are not trusting the Lord, you are leaning on your own understanding. How do you know that? You see, the way you know you trust the Lord is that in all your ways, acknowledging. In all your ways. That means you trust Him. That means you are not leaning on your own understanding, your flesh, your intellect, your smartness. But you acknowledge Him you are not wise in your own eyes. You are trusting in the Lord. That is the realm of self-control. It's a byproduct on the faith journey. When you get to that place, that word that is used, confidence. Confidence. In Philippians 3.3, 3, it talks about confidence. For self-control manifests as confidence. For we are the circumcision who worship God in the spirit. Rejoice in Christ Jesus I have no confidence in the flesh. So for instance, because of the dealings of God, the Holy Spirit coming upon you, receiving you receiving knowledge, the encounters, the understanding you are receiving from scripture, and the encounters and the dreams and visions, you get to a place where now you don't put confidence in yourself. You trust the Lord. Now you trust the Lord, not the flesh. You don't you don't seek, you see, for instance, I can come and stand here, I'm telling you, I can teach for hours by the grace of God. I have many notes I can take in. If at this point, I nearly didn't preach this message because I had not finished the message. So I, I, I wanted to send a message to the media people that uh, the title is The Son of the Lord and of Gideon because that message I prepared long ago for, for NIA, I, did, I, I, I couldn't preach it. So when I saw that today, I cannot preach this message. I said, okay, let me take that one. Hush. I went to my place of prayer, took my tablet, took out the notes, began to read through. No oil, no revelation. Dry. <laughs> then I said, I better finish the message. <laughs> that one, give it to me for today. So I, I went behind my, my laptop, and I had to finish the message. Because I had not finished. I had only started. I told, I told her yesterday, I said that today, I will not pray for long. Because I said, I've not, I've not even finished my message. I won't pray for long. So I won't, uh, uh, because I've not finished the message. <laughs> you see? So the place of conf- confidence in the flesh, I, I could have taken that message come and preached. You would have said, wow, that's a powerful message. But there, there was no oil on that message for today. There was no unction on that material today. So I would have been telling you stories. That is how you put confidence in the flesh. When you can stand before people and you don't even pray, or come and stand here and teach, don't even pray. It means that I trust myself that I can teach by the grace of God. The, the, the anointing to teach is there. So I can trust myself and say, I'll just come and teach. So, prayer is a sign of humility. That's why prayer builds faith. Do you know that? But you all, beloved, building up yourself on your most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. When you invest in prayer, what you are doing is that you are that your, your, your spiritual faculties are being opened up. You are understanding everything. Prayer, it enters all the faculties. You exercise all the faculties. They are all activated. So, if you are prayerful, this revelation can break out of the word for you. You can have visions. You can have dreams. You can have impressions. So, because prayer will lift you from the flesh into the spirit. Why? If any man prays in tongues, he does not pray to man. He said, for no one understands him, how be it in the spirit? He speaks mysteries. How be it or however, in the spirit, he speaks mystery. So, as soon as you start praying in tongues, for instance, you shift location from the flesh to the spirit, 
And when you are in the spirit, you are you are invincible. You are you are unstoppable. There are many things your spirit man can search because the spirit man is a search engine. He said the spirit of man is the kind of the Lord, and he searches all the inward part of the belly. So your spirit is a search engine. But the way the spirit starts searching is when you engage the Holy Spirit when you are praying in tongues, because the Holy Spirit too is a search engine. He too searches. So people who pray, they grow in faith. I know we believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing. That's true. But I've just quoted Jude verse 20 to you. That praying the Holy Ghost, build up yourself in your most holy faith, on your most holy faith. The fourth byproduct of growth is called perseverance or patience. This also a further step into trust, patience. So I said to, to and, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance. It's also a byproduct. What brings out patience in faith is trials, trials, tribulations. Persecutions, afflictions, distress. These five things, they are in the, the faculty of evil. When I preach on overcoming the evil, overcoming evil in the last days, I gave you the, the department of evil, the department. But you see, when I say evil, I mean they are unpleasant. And yet, these things, they are the things that produce the, by, the, the byproduct called patience or perseverance. So when you read James 1, 3 to 4, you say the trial of your faith or the testing of your faith produces, knowing that the testing of your faith produces, you see, byproduct. So the test is applied to your faith to produce patience. And do you know that you... It is with patience and faith that you have the promise. That's why sometimes the, the things that God has said he will do in our lives, the reason for the delay is that patience might be added to faith to have the promise. And patience doesn't come until testing has come. So any believer that you are afraid of testing, you are afraid of, afraid of issues, you cannot grow in faith. You, 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 can, you cannot, and you see, you cannot dodge it. You cannot dodge it. When we say trials, trials is as if you're on trial. As if you're on trial. As if everything is against you. As if every mouth is speaking, is condemning you. Everything is against you. As if somebody has sat down to calculate that your things will delay. So while well, you have prayed, you have fasted, you have done everything. The thing will not move. Patience is being produced. <laughs> Tribulations, the problems of life. Once you are a human being working on this earth, know that problems you will go through issues. There is nothing. We are not in the Garden of Eden. Somebody came from abroad. And the person became frustrated because internet was slow. <laughs> you know, those days where you see when you are when you are copying files, you see them flying on the computer. <laughs> Not that they are flying, then they, they, they will stop. <laughs> so he was, he was like, Joe, now what is this? And he, he wanted to visit me. He was at Pancrono. Then he said, Oh man, the traffic is too bad. <laughs> I said, Charlie. I was with you in secondary school. Eh? We, we, uh, <laughs> you have lived in Kumasi all your life. You are, you are saying traffic is too bad. <laughs> you see, it's like that. <laughs> because when you, when you are outside, maybe maybe internet is, is fast. But here it's not fast. Okay, now it's fast. But at first, to copy one file, you take minutes. Yes. So what I'm saying is that in this life, 
not everything will be smooth, 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 smooth. When, when things get tough, don't think you have sinned against God. And don't think you are outside the will of God. Sometimes, in the midst of the will of God, things will get tough. But you see, you will not lose your joy. Yes. You don't lose your joy. That's, that's the difference. Then, persecution. Things you go through because you took a stand for God. They are persecution. That one too, they come to test your faith to produce patience. So the, 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 the man said, if I don't sleep with you, I will not help you. And you said, take your help. I don't like it. And you suffered because of that. That's persecution. That's persecution. It will produce patience. It will add to your faith. She come and pay bribe. Say, I won't pay bribe. Okay. We will delay your payment. Uh, Pepe will go into your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> there are people who have victimized me and our company because we said we will not do what they wanted us to do. We will not take money we have not worked for. They told us, let's add this so that you can we can share. We said, no, we don't do that. So okay. So because of that, <laughs> because of that, we will delay you. We will not pay you. And you have to suffer for that. If you believe you are a Christian, there are things you will suffer because of your faith. I told my children that if even you tell the truth and they beat you, it's better that you lie. Let them beat you for telling the truth. Then we have afflictions. Things we go through because of our, of our own mistakes. They are called afflictions. And yet, God will not let those things go waste. He has programmed out those things to come and test our faith and produce patience. Then distress the is narrowness, tightness because of life issues. Life no balance. <laughs> when you get cocoa flu, you don't, you don't get silver. When you get, you don't get cocoa flu. <laughs> ah, it's funny, you that song. <laughs> is that a gospel song? <laughs> Okay. So anytime you go through on pleasant circumstance as a believer, your faith is being tried to produce patience. Don't worry. That's why sometimes we go through delays, disappointments, and negative experiences. Some of them, they are not your making. Some of them, you don't have control over them. Some of them, it's from the devil. When you rebuke, 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 and it's not going, pray and ask God why. Paul said, I, I besought the Lord thrice. And there are some things you go through, God will not deliver you. He will explain. He will not give you answers. He will explain the, the problem. Paul said, oh God, oh God, oh God, three times. The God said, my strength is sufficient. My grace is sufficient. And my strength is made perfect in your Thank you for listening to this message. We hope you were blessed. For more of this, download Apostle Joseph Minter app on Google Play Store and also available on all podcast platforms, Apple Podcast, Amazon Music, Spotify, and so many more. You can also visit our website www.torchworldministries.com Torch World Ministries we reach, disciple, equip and release. Be blessed.